Hey everyone, I'm Brian from Blood, Sweat & Gears Automotive and today we're going to show you how to do an oil change on your 14 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Now the procedure is basically the same from 11 through 14. There's a filter change starting in 13, but besides that, the basic procedure is the same. Now the reason why I do this video, even though oil changes are real basic, is there's a few precautions to take and there is a proper way of doing it on this particular vehicle. Okay, so once you got the engine operating temperature, we came back from our, our road test or whatever, our drive, we're gonna let the engine idle for a minute or two, let it cool down a little bit, and then we're gonna pop the hood, pull the keys out, get them away from the vehicle so there's no chance of starting the vehicle. Then you're gonna come over here, open the hood obviously, and this little cover right here, it comes off so you can get access to the filter. You know what that does? That creates a huge freaking mess when it comes out of there. So you don't want to deal with this. So just go ahead and lift up on this and pull it off of here. It's the best thing to do. All right, once this cover's off of here, we got plenty of access to get to all the things we need to touch on here. The filter, the fill cap, the oil over there. Everything's in plain sight now. So the first thing you want to do is open the fill cap and that'll aid with the draining down of the oil. We're gonna keep it near here. And then right here, you can see the filter. There's a hex on top of here, it's a 15 16 All we're gonna do is loosen that. And what that'll allow is it'll, it'll let the relief valve inside of the housing go, and the whole housing full of oil will drain into the oil pan. It's very important. You wanna drain all the oil from the vehicle and this is the first step to get this housing drained out on here. So all you gotta do is loosen it so it won't come off no more. And that'll start the draining process. All right, now once this is off, it's been draining for maybe 30 seconds or so, uh, what we wanna do is place some rags on here in this general area. And then you wanna get your drain pan right on top of the engine here. Then keep one in your hand, and we're simply gonna lift up on this. And the filter, and cap clamp at the same time. And it'll look just like that. See this one right here, this is the new design oil filter that has the, the tip on it like this. The other ones, for the 11, 11s and 12s, they don't have this on there. So that's the big design change. So you wanna get that over here immediately. And we do need to pull and separate it. And then there is an O-ring on this filter. It needs to be changed every time. That one comes with your new filter. So just take it off and then we'll clean it up. Get all the dirt and all the oil off of there. Quick cleaning on the inside. Make sure you don't leave no lint or anything inside of there. And we can put this cap to the side for now. And here's a close up view of that oil filter housing. You can see it's a, quite a large housing on here that holds the filter and of course all that reserve oil in there. And that's why it's so important to drain it out first. All right, now before going down below, we're gonna get this filter and the O-ring out of there. And what's great is an old coffee can, like this, plastic or metal, and you can take your filter, your O-ring, and of course, any of your oil-soaked rags, put them in here so you can take them with to get recycled because all this stuff is toxic in the landfill still. Also, once your oil is cool, it's a good idea to start collecting uh, bottles like this but before the oil change so we can um, pour it into there and have a way of transporting it to a, a lube shop or a dealership or whatever and they'll dispose of it and they'll be able, they should take it no problems no questions asked because I believe it's state law and also believe it or not they get paid for the old oil because a lot of uh, um, shops use it for heating oil so they, they get use out of it either way if you look down below, you'll notice the drain pan plug is on the passenger side there. So what you want to do is lift it from the driver's side so all the oil will slosh to that one side and we can get the most complete drain on here. If you're doing this in your garage, obviously you're going to be lifting with the jack, just like I am. I just have a fancy adapter on mine. Um, what you want to go for is the pinch weld, which you'll see running all along the length of it there, or the actual subframe channel right there where the jack's at. Either way, once you lift it, you want to put a jack stand underneath it to, to prevent it from falling in case the jack fails. And I'll give you a little bit better idea what that pinch weld is. It's right here. It's where all the body seams come together. And that's the strongest part of the vehicle on a, on a unibody. Okay, so once your vehicle is obviously properly 
supported, jacked up. We got plenty of room underneath here to work. Slide underneath here. Get your drain pan out. Over here, in this area right here, it's just gonna shoot out like this, especially when it's hot. Okay, so I'll show you, this is a 13 millimeter, and it's a good idea to use a six point socket on there, because these drain pan heads on here on Chrysler's, they love to strip out. They all use a 13 mil, and they strip out all the time. So if you can prevent that by using the proper socket, more power to you. Keep some rags handy, because your hands are bound to get full of oil. And if I didn't mention it already, it's always a good idea to get in some nitrile gloves. Protect your hands. This stuff is really toxic stuff that comes out of here. So once it's loose, you can simply unscrew it by hand. Hopefully you can still see all this. I had to put the pan back far enough in case it shoots out oil. It's pretty warm, so it's going to shoot out. There we go. You can get a rag ready for your drain plug. You can put that down and start cleaning your hands up here. And just make sure you adjust the pan so that it catches it all the way to the end because it's going to come straight down here eventually. You can see it's just flowing out of That's one of the good things about getting it nice and warm like that. Now once it gets down this far, you basically have drained all the oil out of the vehicle. Uh, you can put the drain plug back in. It's always a good idea once it gets to this point right here, and you think it's done, let it drain for another five minutes or so. In the meantime, you can look over the bottom end of the vehicle and make sure there's no leaks or loose components or dead animals in here, I guess. Alright, I think it's drained enough. Just make sure that your drain plug is nice and clean in the area around it there so you can properly seal like that use the oil to clean it shine it up and start putting it back in there now the torque spec on this is 20 foot pounds really doesn't take that much uh, to tighten these up a lot of lube places seem to hang on these drain plugs and just tighten as much as they can now if you don't have a torque wrench all you gotta do is use a 3 8 ratchet like this. You only have so much length and you really can't over torque it that way. Snug it up till it's tight and that's it. One last cleaning of it. This way we know if there's any drips later on, it's not because we didn't clean it, it's because there's a leak, there's a problem. Alright, back up top. Okay, so the proper filter for this particular engine is a Mo 349. Like I said, it has that tip to it like that, whereas the 11s and 12s don't have that filter. So it's an upgraded filter, and it's not compatible with the other ones. Like I said, the O-ring should be included in the kit, whether it's OEM or aftermarket, but of course I prefer OEM filters over anything else, Ford, Motorcraft, anything. So I gotta just put the, the O-ring onto here, just put it over like that and then you work its way down all the way down all the way around looks good and while you're doing that you're going to lube it naturally with the oil that's on the th threads here so just make sure it's in a very bottom slot on here and then we're going to take our filter we're just going to push it down into the slot in there it'll fall right in the center there and pop in there's a little hole in there and then you just take your cap and you simply start threading it onto here. And the same thing with this. Use a, a 15, 16 and a half inch uh, regular length ratchet like this. And you can just snug it up. And you'll know it's tight on there. After that, give it a quick wipe around the area here so we can check for leaks afterwards. And this is the other reason why I pulled the cover off because you can see the leaks a lot easier this way, if there is any. And this right here is my favorite filling funnel. 
kind of fits right in those filler necks like that and wedges in there and holds so it never pops out. Now the engine on here is brand new. It's got about three, 4,000 miles on it. So what I'm gonna do is put regular base stock oil back into there and we're gonna let the, it's a, the rings and all the components inside the engine fully seat, especially the rings, before we put synthetic in here. Now this engine takes 520 oil and I'll be filling it with Penn's oil today mainly because their new oil that has come out has actually passed all the tests uh, that Chrysler has put up, put forth and they've um, uh, partnered with Chrysler uh, using their oil exclusively at dealerships, etc. So at this point, Pennzoil has come up to my standards and of course Chrysler's standards with their active cleansing agents and they got, they're ho hoping to shed their, their old uh, image of causing sludge in engines. Now like I said, it does take six quarts of 520. If you can't find 520 in your particular area, you can use 530, it is acceptable. The 520 is mainly for, for fuel efficiency and all that, 530 would be just fine. So we got everything all tightened up, top and bottom, everything's all cleaned up. So at this point, all I gotta do is fill her up, go from there. Now the one tip I can give you is that pouring it like this actually seems to be the easiest, most splash proof way of doing it versus like this. It just seems to pour a lot smoother and less air is trapped in there so it doesn't gulp like that. Now in case you're wondering, I get this question a lot. If you are changing your oil for the first time, I recommend it on a brand new vehicle at 3,000 miles. Um, thereafter, you can do it at five and you'll be just fine. But with that first oil change, you wanna get all the garbage out of there at 3,000 like that. Now me personally, on my own vehicles, I like to stick at 3,000 and be happy. But 5,000 is just fine on these vehicles, these new ones. Uh, there's a lot less blow-by uh, dirtying up the engine oil on these. And of course, don't forget your cap. Make sure everything's all sealed up before we start the engine. Okay, so this is good, that's good. The dipstick's out, our drain plug's good. Nice and tight, we got six quarts in there. I think we're ready to start it up. And that's literally all the time that it takes to get the system pressurized, your filter housing here full, and now we can go ahead and check the engine oil level. Now as long as you're in that safe range right there in the hash marks, you are okay. You don't need to adjust the oil level at all. Just make sure you're within the hash marks on there. And that's all there is to it. Now once your oil level is good, we can check over everything, make sure all our caps are back on, there's no leaks, and then we can of course put our cover back on here. It's pretty simple to line it back up. You just kind of lay it on there and it'll fall right into place. One last step we gotta do is reset the oil life on here. So what we need to do is turn on to the run position, like so. And then once it's there, what we're going to do is down here, we're going to pump the accelerator to the floor slowly three times within 10 seconds. Now once the reset procedure is done, there usually is no indication up here on the cluster at all that has been done successfully. It's just the way Chrysler's are. So as long as you pumped it three times slowly within 10 seconds, 
It should all be reset. Okay, so hopefully this walkthrough has helped you do your first oil change on this particular vehicle and engine design. Now, many of you may know me from my Ford Tech Make Your Loco channel I have on YouTube here, and that, that channel is dedicated to everything Fords, all kinds of problems from uh, diesels to transmission to basic maintenance to tips and tricks. So if you have any kind of Ford problems, you can go to that channel. Otherwise, on this channel for my company, my Blood, Sweat, and Gears company is going to be just about anything except for Fords.